My name is Edward Roski, and as CEO at Interel, I've been helping companies plan for uncertainty for the last 25 years. We're here today to discuss the five steps to understanding profitability and why it's critical in changing times. But before we dive into those five steps, allow me to oversimplify profitability calculations for you. At most companies, revenue is well understood. We can track revenue by location, by product, by customer, by channel, usually. But it's not always true. Determining revenue by lead source, like which marketing campaigns are getting the highest revenue return, is a lot more problematic. But in general, companies tend to have a good idea of revenue. Cost of goods sold is pretty good on a unit materials basis, but often gets messy when you have payrolls and aren't being tracked by customer, product, service, and so on. And then we get to operating expenses, and those are often tracked by department, by cost center, and not at the profit center level. But if they do come from things like factories, at least we know, well, all costs in this factory need to be allocated to all the products produced in that factory. But then it gets even harder to determine detailed profitability when you realize how many of your costs are hidden. They show up on P&Ls, but they don't show up by product, by service, by customer, by location, by channel, or anything else. They essentially go into this abyss of indirect overhead. This is what I think of as the portion of the iceberg that is out of sight. It's not that companies don't know what their net income is. We know how much profit we're making, at least at the company level. It's that detailed level that we don't understand. And until we do, we can't take action on those different products, those different customers, those different locations, and so on. And it's hugely important to understand that profitability, but for whatever reason, most companies don't bother calculating what areas are draining cash until they are already running out of cash. As a general rule, you've got to know which of your products are profitable, which customers you should be selling to, what your product should be priced at, what locations should be closed down. During normal times, knowing your 10 most profitable products or your 10 least profitable locations is extremely important. But when the economy is going into recession, it's absolutely critical. You don't have a lot of time to act, so you have to prioritize determining your most valuable and your least profitable customers, products, locations, services. You have to focus on securing who and what is making us money. And you have to stop, at least temporarily, the areas costing you money. You have to know what your true break-even point is so that you know how low you can drop your pricing until you might as well stop selling that product altogether. Once you know where your money's coming from, you have to look at those regions and those customers and locations in those regions to see how they line up with the coronavirus outbreak areas. Because your profitability can suddenly pivot or spiral away if things outside of your control start shifting. And all of this coronavirus is out of our control. People crave this information. Marketing executives want to know where to make money so they can plan advertising budgets. Sales organizations want to focus on who is buying so they can set sales targets and quotas. Operational managers want to focus on what and how so they can balance supply to demand. Merchandisers want to focus on their store floors and their aisles when all the stores are open so they can plan. Corporate level executives just want to know when so they can set profit expectations. Everyone wants different views of profitability. So we have to make sure that we're not only generating profitability data, but that we're sharing it. So we all know that we need it, so why don't we calculate it? Well, part of the problem is that there are no standards for allocating down these higher level costs. There are no agreed upon place to even put the allocated amounts when we're done. Some companies just write a whole lot of code to try and cram it into the general ledger as journal entries. Now, I don't normally recommend putting this in your general ledger. You wanna stay away from overburdening your GL with many dimensions, lots of trees. But when we're on what I'm calling coronavirus time, let me tell you in absolutely no uncertain terms, do not write a bunch of code. Do not try and put this into your general ledger. It takes too long to implement. You don't want to be what ifing and playing around in your GL right now. You've got 30 days or less to figure out what is and what isn't profitable. As I said at the very beginning, there are five steps to building a profitability application. 
The first step is identifying which costs or revenues that you need to allocate. Some of your costs will be direct costs that are already at the lowest level by product, customer, location, channel, and so on, but some will need to be allocated. So what are those costs to be allocated? Some are going to be granular costs, like the materials that go into a product or the hours that someone bills. You might know these costs down to the unit level, but you might not know them by customer. So you might need to do some multiplication to get it over there. And then you're gonna have overhead costs that all have to be allocated down to some level. You could allocate them all the way down to a unit cost or maybe just to a cost pool. It's quicker, it might not be as helpful, but at least it's quicker. There are benefits to both, but the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. And that first step is identifying where all those costs are, what level are those costs stored so that we can get to allocating. Once we have our costs, the second step is to identify your drivers. What numbers are you going to use to allocate those costs from step one? What are the drivers? Are they currently being captured at the appropriate level? If they're not, you're going to need to use different drivers at different times to start pushing costs and revenues down level by level. So it's called a multi-step allocation. We have to identify the drivers for each cost element. Say we want to allocate accounts receivable. That might be allocated by units sold. Maybe we want to allocate shipping expense by product weight. Maybe we allocate utilities costs by square footage. Maybe we'll allocate the entire human resources department by the head count of each other profit center department. We have to determine if the driver data is captured in a system somewhere. Can it be loaded? Does it need to be input? How confident are we in the accuracy of those drivers? And we have to figure out what assumptions we're making. For instance, say you have a sales support team and the sales manager and the sales support team support quote unquote, all the sales reps equally. Does that mean you should just take the costs and divide it by however many sales reps you have and assign it all at the same level? Or should we weight our allocation of sales support expenses to sales rep based on revenue that the sales rep is generating? Now that we have our costs and we know which drivers we want to use, step three is to identify the appropriate level that we want to actually analyze that profitability. Maybe it's by product or customer or service or business unit or operating company or geography and so on. What information once it's allocated would cause us to take a different physical action? You have to review all of your desired business attributes, all the different categories. Some might say all the different dimensions for your revenue. You might have it by customer, by product, by service, by region, by state, by zip, by sales rep, by manager. We need to then take and identify how and is data captured for all those desired business attributes, not only where I have my revenue, but where I want to allocate my expenses. And should we include every possible business attribute or just the most important ones? You have to balance the amount of attributes with the time and the complexity. Maybe you have revenue down to the zip code level, but just because you can allocate down to the zip code doesn't mean you should be allocating down to the zip code. Because what level of detail do we really need? What would cause us to do something different if we had it by that attribute? Maybe if we had it by SKU, that wouldn't cause us to turn certain SKUs on or off, but if we had it by product category, we can make a better, more informed decision. Maybe we don't need it by individual patient, maybe we need it by service. We also have to think about who is going to be doing the analyzing. Are they knowledgeable enough to take different physical actions based on the information that they're given? The fourth step is tricky because there is no generally accepted cost accounting practices concept for allocating. We have to figure out which costing allocation method you should use. And you have to pick just one. The simple answer is there isn't just one. You have to weigh the options. You have to determine the right method for your organization. If I was implementing this in normal times, in general, it wouldn't be just one method. It would likely be a combination of allocation methods to get the best, most accurate, most actionable cost, given the resources that I want to spend on implementing it, plus what I want to spend on supporting it. But in times of change, when we're on coronavirus time, when you need to know what's profitable and you need to know it now, 
you have to choose the one that you can get up and running the quickest. Just be aware, don't just do a simple peanut butter spread. A peanut butter spread is where you divide all the costs evenly or simply by percent of revenue. A peanut butter spread isn't really helpful for driving different physical actions. You are going to have more interesting, more helpful drivers than that. The final step is where you actually start implementing what you've designed. You have to pick a tool, a technology. At NRL, we use Oracle EPM Cloud Enterprise. EPM Enterprise has a pre-built profitability and cost management process that we found works really well for us at NRL. Whatever technology you use, it should let business people manage allocations, making sure that you have complete transparency into your allocations at all levels. You should never be telling the people that have costs allocated to them, I don't know why you have that amount. It's kind of a black box. It's buried in some code, half of it's in the ERP, and some of it frankly comes out of Excel formulas. For profitability to succeed, it's about being transparent at all levels or no one will have confidence in your information. Understanding your true profitability can be the key to your survival. You need to use whatever technology will get you results you can use now. Do you truly understand which of your customers or products is profitable? How has that changed in light of the current economic environment? What percentage of your customers' products channels are driving your profitability? Which ones are unprofitable? Where should you focus those limited resources during this coronavirus recession? What proportion of your resources do your customers, your products, your channels consume? What are your true costs to provide you with a complete business process? It's most important, you've got to have a good tool. You've got to use that tool to take your higher level scenario plans and your strategic models and allocate them down to those granular levels. A good technology will help you. A bad technology is just going to get in your way. So those are our five steps to profitability. One, what costs should be allocated. Two, what are the drivers for allocating each cost. Three, what is the appropriate level to drive a different physical action. Four, which costing allocation method is most appropriate. And five, what tool can I use to implement quickly? What do you do with this information? Well, there are four stages in the profitability life cycle, each one feeding into the next until they become a flywheel. Stage one is reporting. This is where we answer what happened. This is where the organization measures their profitability with key performance indicators, KPIs, by asking questions like, which products have the highest margin? Who are the most profitable customers? And so on. Stage two is analysis. This is where we get to root causes. Why are these things profitable or unprofitable? The organization has to search for the meaning behind the KPIs. They have to figure out the why. Why are some customers more profitable than others? We have to figure out how variable and overhead costs come into play. Stage three is management. This is where we ask who is going to take this information and change things. And the final stage is planning. This is where we determine when will these changes make an impact because it doesn't do any good to change something if it doesn't modify your course. It should lead to a different set of numbers than you were originally forecasting. Once your new plan of action is underway, you report on how effective it was and you're continuing on in the exact same process, getting faster and faster at making better business decisions. Your resources are extremely limited right now. You need to figure out where you need to focus your resources to increase profits. Go to nrl.com slash updates and stay up to date on all the information as it changes. This is Edward Roski with NRL Finance News. Stay safe out there.